Hello, everyone. This is the Law of Attraction Roundtable, and I'm Gary Temple Bodley. And today we have Astrid and Laurel, and we're going to talk about a question that Tistria asked. This is a question that is the most often asked question. Uh, it's like we all get into Law of Attraction, we all understand this stuff intellectually. By the way, hi, Astrid. Hi, Gary. Hi, everyone listening. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just here in the background. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you, you learn this stuff, you get, get into it, and you figure out that you're going to change your life because of all this stuff that resonates with us, and then it doesn't work. And how come things aren't changing? And why do I feel stuck? And, this and is how come by day five, you're still not a millionaire? What's right. up with this love attraction? Right. By day yeah. five, you should be a millionaire. Yeah. And... Uh, it takes actually it takes five years. So yeah. if you do it right, it takes. I'll, ta I'll, ta I'll take that. Years. Yeah. And yours is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know why doesn't it work? And there is a big reason for why it doesn't work. And I love how Joshua and Laurel get straight to the point on this, and they don't oh pussyfoot God. around. And I felt so bad. I thought it was like, oh my God, I'm not channeling. It's just my inner bitch coming out. <laughs> yeah, I felt so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's channeling too, right? Yeah. It depends on who you're channeling. Yeah. Well, maybe I Laurel's just a bitch. It's a group. So it's a group of bitches. A group of bitches. A bitchy yeah. group. Yes. Could be. <laughs> no, I like this part because I want to know what I'm doing that's not working. I want to know why it's not working. And this answer, both of these answers tell us why it's not working. Yeah. So um, anyway, you wanted to see the hole in my face from, yeah. from Tucker. So I was playing with Tucker the other day and his sharp little baby tooth hit my lip. Right oh, there. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. And not I exactly was- exactly a hole. It's well, just it was like a hole a at the time. It was, it was deep and I'm like, I have to go get stitches. And this is going to be a scar on my face. And then I listened to a podcast today and Whitney Cummings was talking about what really makes people interesting are these scars on their faces. And in Germany, in the old days, they would, you know, the elite soldiers would um, do fencing and they would do fencing with real swords and real whatever quills. And they would have scars all over their faces and the scars they would actually take off, you know, in this fencing, they'd wear goggles and they'd wear something over the nose, but the rest of the face was exposed. Now you see it and they have a full face mask. But in those days, they used to wear those scars as pride and, and they were very attractive, apparently. So I, I feel it, more attractive. I find it, so, find it so interesting that you, as an adult man, would worry about a scar in your face. I know, like, isn't that funny? That you're so attached to wanting to look good that that's yeah. a thing for you yeah i'm a that's... i'm a looking good that's and a, you could I even have like a mustache and it wouldn't show i can't have a mustache that's you my could. problem i tried so many times oh, you don't have facial hair you don't have no enough? i have a little bit and it's just wiry and thin and it looks oh. like i have mud on my face <laughs> mm, okay but yeah if i had a if i could do a mustache then i'd do a mustache it'd be fine but but i'm happy with my scar we'll see what it turns out yeah. yep Anyway, so that was my manifestation event for the week. Uh, you well, you, cover, you covered it up by um, manifesting this uh, information about those cool soldiers yes. to make you feel good again. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you had any manifestation events lately? I have that all the time. It's usually not, it's sort of, it's more thoughts. I just like, right. it's usually not an incident. It's more that I notice that I'm reacting with a feeling or thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess always a feeling because otherwise I sort of wouldn't notice the thoughts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, um, my mom is a very good teacher for me. So, yeah. and that was, I first had this incident with my mom. And then as I was channeling this answer for today's question, I realized it's the same thing that someone is pointing out to me. Um, totally. And it was quite interesting. And I'm glad that I got it into rather small manifestation events. Yeah, and yeah. you know, manifestation events don't have to, you know, appear in full blown events. Mm. When you get good at this stuff, it happens at a thought level. 
And yeah. if you have a resistant thought, you can say, well, why am I resistant to that? Yeah. Why, you know, we're doing another course that we're gonna put on Insight Timer. It's a 10 day course. And the first one is about weight loss. And one part that I read today was that it's, you know, the two emotions that exist are love and fear. Mm -hmm. And the approach that works with the laws of the universe is love and acceptance. You love the things that you like, the things you think are good, mm -hmm. and you accept whatever you think is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that love and acceptance are both the same field of energy. They're both based yeah. in love. Yeah. And when you focus on anything in love, you bring more of that to you. And when you focus on anything in fear, you bring more of that to you. And so if you can maintain or even enhance that uh, focus of love through appreciation and gratitude, more love-based things will come. Mm -hmm. And if you can accept, not, not fight against or hate, but accept everything you don't like, less of those things will come. Yeah. And this is how you navigate this reality, love and acceptance. Yeah. And I think it's, it's interesting because once we were on this new approach, we become very, at least I did, and I still am very focused on finding my limiting beliefs and finding the fear and like, oh, is there a negative emotion? What's going on? Yeah. And so I realized, I realized through this question today that I have attached myself to the belief that I am too fearful. I have attached myself so much to this belief that I created an identity around it. It's part of who I think I am. Mm -hmm. And so of course my reality has to reflect this belief, this identity. So I'm having people comment to me and tell me all the time. I feel like it's all the time because that's how I perceive it. Yeah. How I'm too fearful. I'm not acting on inspiration quickly enough. I'm not um, pushing through my fear enough and I feel not good enough. Yeah. And this isn't like when people say nice things to me, I just sort of ignore it. It's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> if people comment that I'm too fearful, oh my gosh, yes, that's the truth. Uh -huh. And so it's this sifting of information that is, I'm sort of supporting and building of my identity around being too fearful yeah. because of my focus on, mm. I, I started out trying to focus on changing this fear mm. or this relationship. That's still controlling and, it. Yes. And I just start, I made it into focus as if, so it's just creating more of it. I'm focusing on this part that I want to change, but I'm just making it worse because I think this is who I am. I think it's defining for who I am. And truly, you have no idea what anyone else feels, so you can't really make a comparison if you're too fearful, or mm -hmm. if you're the same as anyone else, or if you're less fearful. And yeah, I would exactly. say that, okay, so I would say for me, <clears throat> from my experience with other people, that in many areas of my life, I'm pretty good at pushing past fear. Yeah, I think I've you are too. a lot of experience with it, especially when yeah. it comes to money. And this is what helps me become more abundant. Yeah. Yet, um, there's certain things that I, that other people would do easily that I wouldn't do because I'm more fearful in those areas. Like so, what? Like karaoke. Like what? Karaoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you did that. I thought you did karaoke on that Joshua thing. Not without massive quantities of wine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, I share so, that. If you're afraid of anything, just get a bottle of wine. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. I feel you have a lot of confidence when it's about, I can see that's probably where you got it in your, in your previous job with sales and promotion, marketing, being confident in what you have to give. Yes. Sort of being, that's, yep. I find that very helpful to sort of try to model myself and sort of borrow some of that confidence. Yeah. And you build it too, because when we did the first boot camp, I didn't know what was going to happen with it because mm. uh, it had never been done before. I just knew what had happened to me. And so that was enough confidence for me to get 12 people in, 13 people in. But uh, those 13 people all had prior experience with Joshua. So yeah. they were pretty confident too. The next group, which, which started four weeks later, was a mix of people that I knew and didn't know. Mm. And... So I got more confidence with that group. Yeah. And the next group was mostly people I didn't know. 
Yeah. And some very high achieving people in that mm. third group. And now, and then the fourth group that you're in um, is almost completely people that I don't know except you and um, Isabel. Um, but they're all new people who have come through yeah. referrals from other people yeah. or wherever they come from. And so I'm getting more and more um, confidence and the groups are growing larger and larger and everything yeah. easier and easier. So a lot of this moving through fear has to do with confidence, starting mm. out where you can start out, wherever that is, yeah. and then building on that. And it doesn't have to, you know, we'll have six camps in this year. And by the end of this full year, I'll have been doing Joshua full time without doing any other income at all for the yeah. first time since Joshua came through almost six years ago. So That's it good. took six years to get to that point though. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, it could have been done faster had I been able to do more and it could have been slower had I, had I not, you know, when we set up like the cruises, people just said, we're setting up this cruise. Deborah Jo goes, we're just gonna do this cruise. I'm like, okay, and she goes, I'll organize it. Okay, and I'll see who comes up, but I wasn't really attached to the results. And so who, you know, just how it worked out is, is a, a lot of people came, enough people, but not too many people, you know? Yeah. Everything worked out. It was always a great group of people. There wasn't anyone that was weird. It was all fun all the way through, you know? Mm. So it's working out perfectly. Yeah. yeah. And then at this end of the year, you know, probably next year, there'll be a whole nother thing. Yeah. A whole yeah. nother level to everything. And that'll just be a reflective of my confidence level at that point. Yeah. That's what they say. You know, there's always, it's just step one. It's always a step one. Yeah. And then you build on that to get to the next level, yeah. which is reassuring. Thank God. We did have the inspiration to have another event in September, but it was coming up too quickly and I did not push past the fear to do that. Yeah. I wanted it to have 20 or 30 people and we just couldn't, it was enough time to get it all together. But it could have been five people and that would have been fine too. I just didn't, I just, I just didn't have the confidence to push through that fear. But I mean, that's also fine. Yeah. It's, there's it's, nothing wrong with not taking every Right. You, can, you get a new chance and it's yeah. also there. You also have to have the desire to do it. Cause if it's just, you're just doing it because you feel like you should, it's not, yes. may, might not be as fun if you don't really have the desire to do it. So you don't have to take every chance. It's just. Yeah. And that was true about this September idea because, you know, we have this house and we have access to the two bed and breakfasts across the street. And so it's really a great setup for groups to come here. Yeah. But yeah, the house isn't fully complete and it's still hot in September. And, you know, where everyone's going to be is the back part of the house, which is the family room, the kitchen and all that, which is hot in the summer. Because oh, right. we have big gigantic windows in the back and that yeah. the house faces west. So in the afternoon, it's really hot. So it'll work out. But then, then our event in October, which is sold out, is a perfect time, but then if you have another event, now you're in November, December, January, and it's too cold here, it's all snowy. Then we're gonna go to Florida, and so now in February, we're gonna see if we can set up an event there, or go on a cruise somewhere and do that. And Sounds that. good, so lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff, yep. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna jump into this question by Tistria. The question that brought up a lot of fear in me. Let's hear it. Yes. Yes. See, you know, I, when I read this, I had this thing like, yeah, I totally identify with this. I know that tons and tons of people aren't able to use what they know to create the new reality that they're looking for in their lives. And so there's this disconnect, you know, there's all these people listening to Abraham, all these people listening to Joshua, all these people listening to Laurel, and all the other channels and all the other teachers out there. And only a few of them are actually making these changes. I'm one who has manifested, you know, this new life that I have here, this new love and, um, and an income from Joshua and, and then my soul's purpose as a spiritual leader and teacher. And it's all come together. 
But mm -hmm. even at this point, I still have nagging doubts and fears for the future and worries about things and still yeah. try wishing a little bit that things were different than they are. I've come a long way, but how do you make this work faster? And I think these two answers really, really work, um, help us with that. Yeah. Okay. So, dear Joshua, I feel as though I've come to a point in my spiritual path, somewhat a point of awakening, but it's not really an awakening. It's more of a realization of who and what I am and what I'm doing. I realize it all. I see it all. But however hard I try, I cannot truly wake from it all because I am it and to break away would mean to lose myself. So I find myself lost. Why am I here? Why are we here? To live this dream of sleep or to be awake in the dream, watching it all unfold, only to do nothing, to, do, to be able to do nothing, and our purpose is actually to do nothing, to accept and surrender to it all as it is love. In times of hardship, I often tell myself, it's all happening for a reason, but that reason seems to elude me the more I progress and grow. The reason seems to me at this point from my perspective to be in fact nothing. So what's the point? Why, why are we here? What we came to tackle seems an impossible task to make an impact, change the world, make it better. How can we? We can't even tackle the demons within ourselves. I feel overcome with awareness, yet I feel so powerless in it all. That's that line right there. You know, yeah. we're all aware now. We know this stuff intellectually. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you feel powerless because nothing's really changing. And what is the point of awareness if we cannot allow ourselves the, the power to change? We didn't come here to change, you will say. We came here to expand and grow. Into what? Nothing at the end of it all? So why must we live through these lives only to come back to what we were in the first place? We must accept ourselves. I accept that I'm a being of light who came to a messed up world, went through some messed up shit, and in the shit I grow like manure on a field of corn. And then I blossom and bloom to the point of complete awareness. Then I die, go back to being non-physical. Why? I chose this. Yep, I know. Yet I can't understand why. Why would I choose this? This pain, this torment, this hardship. Yes, the light feels amazing. And in these moments, it feels amazing to have a body to be in this world. That's why I practice yoga. My body is just being in it. It, it, it is a pleasure. Breathing is a gift. The miracle of life is, is unfathomable. It all feels amazing, yes, but why? What is the point of it all? Recently, I look around and I see and feel and experience and think none of this is real. Yet in this world where nothing matters and nothing is real, I'm hurting, feel pain at the same old things that triggers me. In this cycle, awake in a living dream, powerless to change it or stop it, just watching the cycle unfold and unable to break away. I feel depressed, but mostly I feel numb. So this feeling indicates to me that what I'm, I'm thinking does not align to my higher self. So what is the limiting belief here? That there is no point to life, that there is hope, that I need to keep the faith and carry on through the shit storms knowing it's all happening for a reason. That is to come back to nothing, to non-physical beings for what? And th then the cycle begins again. All right, with all my love, Tistria. Okay, so we'll go into Joshua's answer. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I didn't receive that last part there, which I find interesting. That's obviously a manifestation event for some purpose for me. Yeah. But when I read that question, it triggered me. And I felt, I, I was thinking, why is this so provocative to me? Because it's not, and you know, it's not my question. But what I realized is that it somehow reminded me of some of the pain that I used to feel when I was in what I now would call darkness. And so I'm not saying that she's feeling pain. I'm just saying that it, for me, it triggered some of that feeling, which was weird because I'm not fully able to access any of those feelings of that deep despair. Because I know you say that um, as we are on this path, as we do this work, we become more sensitive. And for me, it's sort of the opposite. I feel like I'm less sensitive to pain now than I used to be, emotional pain. And I think part of it is because I'm no longer carrying this as much of this unworthiness with me. So I don't have these raw, open wounds. It's sort of more healed. So when things trigger me, they don't hurt as much because I'm not, I just don't carry that same amount of pain. Yeah. So when I feel bad, it's sort of, it doesn't, 
it's like a prickle. It's not that hard stab. It's just like a tiny, it's more like an irritant. It's not really hurting me. And I find that such a relief. And I just want people who are really struggling, like suicidal or really in pain. I want them to know that it doesn't, it never gets worse than what you're living right now. Because for me, it's so much easier. I feel so much less sensitive to emotional pain now. And it's such a relief. So it's interesting because when you're like you, you're mm -hmm. this magnificent being who has this intense soul's purpose to be incredible, yet you feel so unworthy, that's that inner conflict between what your inner self knows and, and your limited perspective. And so that's so intense. So it's like, you know, imagining you're, you know, if you were the greatest human that had ever lived, thinking you were the worst human that ever lived, that disconnect between yeah. the two. Well, that's true of all of us, but some people don't feel that disconnect as, as greatly as other people do. But mm. that unworthiness feeling led to the unfolding of the life you're living now and you coming out and going through this new exploration of who you truly are. Mm. The whole rest of your life before that was the exploration of who you were. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for you, for me, on the other hand, like getting so upset at Tucker <laughs> my lip. I mean, you would have thought that I was the biggest baby in the world. <laughs> yes, um, exactly. But you're right? a man. Yeah. And that's <laughs> what men do is men just like, you know, uh, get, get numb to their feelings. Well, for me, I'm getting way more sensitive. I'm not numb to them anymore because they're so far and few between. And I'm so used to feeling good now yeah. that when something tiny upsets me, I cry like a baby. And that's what babies do. You know, you come in yeah. and you get a little hungry and you cry like you're going, going to die. Yeah. You know, and that's how we're supposed to be. But I built up this, you know, nerf layer around my feelings, didn't feel them as intensely as I feel now. Yeah. But I can totally relate to feeling like a victim, though. I, I've carried that around for a while and my mom is still reminding me like the great teacher she is but go ahead with the, the okay. answer i really enjoyed that okay dear tistria would it do any good to tell you that the point of life is to do exactly what you are doing you came here to explore and expand through experience and you're currently doing that perfectly what is the point of expansion to become more when you imagine the idea of moving through experience Sometimes in suffering and sometimes in joy, you cannot understand the point of it all. It seems pointless and you feel negative emotion. You've just hit the nail on the head. You've just figured it all out. It's a matter of perspective. And so when people say now, like, um, you know, they're going through uh, suffering or whatever, or, you know, they come in, you know, they uh, went through some messed up shit, um, it's all from that limited perspective. The only way you could perceive it as messed up is from that limited perspective. Yeah. The only way you could see the world as anything but perfect is through a limited perspective. Yeah. And that's what causes suffering. If you think your desire is not coming to you, well, you're, you have this illusion that it's not coming, that things aren't working out right. But it is coming to you. You just can't see it from where you are because your perspective is too limited. And it's so funny when you look back from like, if you get to a place of feeling good for a, a long time and you sort of elevate your vibration and at least for me, looking back, it's really difficult to like to understand why I was feeling, why I was so upset, why I was in such a, a painful place because it really wasn't that bad. Like I've never had any real trauma. It's all been within me and it's, it's really that's what also part of what this question triggered that you sort of you sort of dig yourself into a hole yeah. and you don't see how acceptable or good your life really is there's always something good in every in everyone's life and especially as an adult where you have that because if you're a kid it's not easy to like to necessarily 
pull yourself out of a situation where you're being abused. But if you're an adult, you always have that power. I don't care what they say, but as an adult, you have the power to remove yourself from any situation. Yeah. And I remember just, a time when I was in college and <clears throat> had broken up with my girlfriend and I was on this trip with these two other awesome, beautiful girls moving them into their college in Tampa. And I'm around all their friends and you know, tons of beautiful girls and guys and we're all having, fun. they're all having fun. And I'm in this total depressed state. <laughs> and I look back now and I'm going, you know, I'm glad that we broke up, obviously. Yeah. And that was part of it. And I went through all this needless suffering mm -hmm. because I was just, you know, allowing that negative emotion to linger and not really perceiving what was good was happening. You know? Yeah. But yeah. it's so funny how you can sort of just like lose yourself in focusing on like, I insist that this is wrong and I have one problem. And so I have to let it consume all of my reality. Exactly. It's so funny. Yeah. From your, from your, from a limited perspective, you perceive there is no point to life, to this life and you feel negative emotion. What does that tell you? If emotion is your guidance system at work, you can know for sure that when you choose a limited perspective, your inner self will never agree with you. All you're doing is choosing a limited perspective. From the higher perspective of your inner self, you can only perceive how wonderful and amazing your experience in physical reality is. It's simply not possible to do that when you're holding on to a limited perspective. Your emotions let you know which perspective you're choosing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So true. And so if you feel negative emotion, you're going to say, holy shit, oh, I'm looking at this from a limited perspective. What, how is my inner self looking at the situation? Yeah. And it's also comforting because if you feel like, oh shit, I said something wrong. I did something stupid and you feel bad for me, then I'm taking this negative feeling and I'm saying, okay, obviously I didn't say something stupid because my inner self is giving me these negative feelings. So I must be wrong in assuming that it was wrong. Right. So then it's sort of like a comforting thing. Okay. Someone like a neutral, a neutral judge is saying you didn't do anything wrong. Yes. I like, I, I cleared out. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing this new course for insight timer and part is a 10 day course in, in one of the days, Joshua gives this analogy, you know, if, if, there's a mice in a maze and it's running around looking for the exit. Mm. It's looking at that maze, you know, from that limited perspective of being there in the maze. But yeah. from the higher, if you're looking at the mouse, you can see obviously where the exit is. Right? Yeah. Now it says, then they go on and say, imagine you're in one of those corn stalk mazes. Do you have those in Nor Norway? And you've got a friend who's hovering in a hot air balloon above. Your friend has control you each have a device, and if you're going in the right direction, the green light is always on, right? That's positive emotion. And if you take a, a turn that's not leading towards the exit, the red, a red light comes on, and you can just shift your course. And the friend's never gonna tell you where the exit is, because that would take the fun out of that mm, maze. Yeah. But, um, but you do have that guidance, and, but that's not what we do. We turn left, we get a red light, negative emotion, and we insist we still know the way to the end, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so we end up going, finding a dead end and having to turn around again. And Joshua said, there's nothing wrong with that. You've explored a new part of this maze. It's just not effective in overcoming your obstacle, which in this case is the maze. And once you overcome that obstacle, you'll feel this exhilaration of having completed the ob obstacle and feel a feeling of relief and have a new perspective because you've gained through the experience of that, yeah. that experience, right? I would also yell at the red light and tell it to switch to green. Like, I hate you, be green, be green. You should be right. green. Yeah. yeah. The damn thing's not working. Yeah. <laughs> the limiting belief is that you are not the creator of your reality, that you have no control over your life and that you are not worthy of the life you desire you effort and struggle to control your reality. In fact, you use these teachings to try to control your reality. 
You understand it all on an intellectual level, but you cannot seem to incorporate it into the fabric of your life. You're missing one large part in, in all of this. It is the idea of control. That is the entire reason why I got into law of attraction. Me too. Or yep. for me, it was to manifest money. Yeah, me too. So like within the first week after reading The Secret, I thought for sure, shit, I'm going to be, be a millionaire this week. I'm going to take my friends on business class to Las Vegas this weekend. Yes, <laughs> I finally got it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, mm. that was like five years ago. Oh, shit. You said five years, right? Yeah. But you, oh, thank yeah. God. Yep. Five years from the time that you uh, stop control, let's say that. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> you cannot control your conditions. You can only control your vibration. You are living an approach to life based in the total control over yourself, all others, and the world around you. This approach can never work. You can feel like a victim as long as you like and wish for things to be different than they are. But until you stop seeking validation outside of you, you will never find relief. The only relief lies in the absolute acceptance of yourself, all others, and the conditions as they exist. Give up control and look at everything from the higher perspective. Yeah, which is right, hard. Can, yeah. I realized, I realized with my mom, because she's she loves to be the martyr. She loves being a victim. So I grew up with that. So I also learned that being a victim is a good thing, because then you get pity and, yeah. you know, it's, it's a good thing to be a victim. And so I've been working on sort of letting go of that, but I realized when she triggered me and also when this question triggered me, because I perceived it as being sort of the victim mentality, I realized that now when I'm not able to manifest what I want, when I want it, I feel like a victim. I'm not able to control my manifestations, my reality, myself to such a degree that, that I can manifest what I want. And when I'm not able to control myself and my manifestations in this, in this way, I feel like a victim. Yeah. I just, that control thing, just, it's like everywhere for me, yeah. everything. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's like surfing. No one learns how to surf the first day. It takes years and years and years. But it's not in really in the being the champion surfer. Hmm. It's in, you know, getting one wave and going for a couple seconds, that yeah. thrill of that, and then trying it again and trying it and failing, 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 then try it again, get another wave for a few more seconds, you know, and that, and just, <clears throat> and then take, you know, then say, oh, I got the first parking spot. That's a manifestation. I did yeah. that, right? Yeah. Or, oh, I got, you know, this unexpected you know gift from someone yeah. or whatever these little things are it's i just find it so interesting that even though we're living this new approach at least for me i still try to control through wanting to control my manifestations well because so I, I'll, I'll be like oh it's up to the universe just do this by <laughs> then yeah right now All right so exactly. i'm letting go and allowing you for you to do it right now in this way See, I'm not controlling as long as you do what I want. Yeah. yeah. No control. I give up no control. control. Yeah. Just make sure this shit gets done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, where, where you are now in the boot camp, and again in week seven, uh, Joshua talks a lot about what you think you want is different than what you truly want, and all your suffering is because what you, th you, you perceive that what you think you want isn't coming. And if you don't need what you think you want to explore life the way you're exploring it, it can't come. You know, I, pr I prefer to see it. If you don't have it, you don't need it right now. Yeah. That's well, comforting that's to me. Yeah. yeah. If you don't have it, you don't need it Yeah, because you're exploring. Well, that's what this week was. Uh, one of the slides was if you're exploring loneliness, mm. companionship would make no sense to that exploration. Yeah. If you're exploring love and acceptance and appreciation and self-validation and self-approval, then companionship makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But you still have to clear out those limiting beliefs before you're ready to get that partner that you really want. Well, Otherwise, you would get a shitty partner. You would get a partner that, that reflects back to your limiting beliefs. Um, and that's why you want to make sure you do that vibrational shift before 
Yeah. You start manifesting these things. But one thing that limiting beliefs really do is when you do get into alignment and you do receive inspiration, fear will always pop up and that fear is always based in limiting beliefs. And so the reason we work so much on the limiting beliefs is so that when you're inspired, that fear won't be more intense than your desire and you'll be able mm. to push past it. Yeah. That's really the better. Limiting beliefs are only bad because they limit you from acting on inspiration. Yes. Uh, let's see. Okay. Imagine that your child fa failed a class in school. What would your reaction be? It would be fear. You, were, you would perceive it as wrong. You would want to change the conditions. You would wish her grade was better. You would feel negative emotion. But your inner self would not feel this way, and this is the, receive, the reason you are receiving negative emotion. You would suffer through the expansion of this event needlessly. In the end, the failed grade would lead to something so beneficial that you would thank the teacher for failing your child. But in the moment, you decide that it is wrong and you suffer through it. It is all due to a limited perspective caused by a limiting belief. So then, do you address the child, the teacher, or the limiting belief? Yeah, that's true. For everything that has cost me suffering in my life, if I could just like fast forward a few years and then look back at it, I would know that I didn't have to suffer. It's going to work itself out. This is a good thing. And I, if I could just trust this, or if I knew this in a way, I, would have, I wouldn't have suffered. Right. If I was the higher perspective is not just the higher perspective of your inner self, but the higher perspective gained over a period of time. Yeah. Through time, you expand to a higher version of yourself. Looking back, you go, that was silly. Yeah. I should never have spent so much time in agony. Maybe. Yeah. Wasted and worrying. Yeah. yeah. Could have had fun instead. Yeah. You may understand our teachings. You may agree with what we have said what we have to say, but you have not done the work. You have not reduced the intensity of limiting beliefs. You still think some things are wrong. You have not changed your approach to life. You are still acting as a victim rather than the creator of your reality. If you know the information is true, but do nothing to change your behavior, then you will be mired in conflict and suffering. You will make it worse on yourself until you incorporate what you know into the fabric of your life you will remain in conflict and nothing will change. Until you do the actual daily work to raise your vibration, nothing will change. Until you live in love instead of fear, nothing will change. Until you see things as good and right rather than wrong and or bad, nothing will change. If you continue to disagree with your inner self and hold on to your limiting beliefs and self-imposed limitations, nothing will change. In fact, if you do nothing, your limiting beliefs will grow stronger and your perspective will grow more limited. And this will not feel good to you. It's time for you to change. Are you ready to actually change? Will you finally do the work? We will see. With ooh, our love. We will see. We will see. That's like, ooh, exciting. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Is, is when you're listening to podcasts, reading books, watching videos, you're just, you're receiving the information intellectually, hmm. but unless you're actually doing the work, you can't really integrate it into your life. Yeah. You may make subtle changes here and there, but you will not live the new approach to life. In order to live the new approach to life, you have to, I would say, meditate every day, You'd have to do some sort of daily spiritual practice and you would have to analyze your fears and process your limiting beliefs on paper. I disagree. I never meditate outside of yoga class. I have my quiet time, but I don't call it meditation. And I don't use paper anymore. I used it when I was doing the Joshua one-on-one -on -one for a uh -huh. year. But then I also got that one-on-one -on -one coaching from Joshua, helping me to see the limiting beliefs. and. And for me, I needed that help. At that point in my life, I needed someone outside of me that I trusted to point out, point out that to me. But I understand, but I also think that if you're a doer, then if you like doing, and if you're more of a, yes, if you're more of a doer, then that whole approach with writing it down and having a spiritual practice and having that routine is helpful. 
I there think are that some of us that are more of like intellectually, I like to think my way through it. I can spend days thinking my way through these things and that okay. works for me. Yeah, it's well, different approaches. Okay. This is Joshua's approach and this is yeah. the approach for Tistria. This is the approach for me and this is the approach for those people that I've seen make changes. Hmm. Um, I think that there, that, you know, in the boot camp we do 49 days of um, processing limiting beliefs that come through manifestation events. Mm. It's a two page thing that we do every night. Mm. By the end of it, just about everyone who's done all 49 of them can now do it in their mind. Yeah. But you need that practice. You need that actual practice of doing it because there's a step by step yeah. procedure for it. Um, I have a free course if anyone who's listening would like to get it. It's a seven days to radically change your vibration by processing limiting beliefs that allows you to do it. And so, I mean, I've probably had a hundred people do that, mm -hmm. that uh, free course and people are just blown away by mm -hmm. how quickly they can change the perception in seven days. Yeah. And by the seven days, they're just looking at their life totally differently. Yeah. Uh, I think that meditation is extremely important and I try to meditate every day. I don't always do it, but I try to. Sometimes I meditate twice a day. Mm. Um, I almost, I, I think I always meditate before I channel Yeah. on those days. Um, and, you know, if, if we have a 16 hours of being awake, you know, what's 15 minutes of doing a daily spiritual practice of no, writing what, I, what you appreciate, what you're what I'm, for, what, what I'm saying is that some of us have fast paced life and lives and some of us have lives where we incorporate quietness and stillness and just sitting for because that's what we like and so different practices for different people and I'm, I understand that you believe in what you do but I also think it's quite a limiting belief if you believe that your way is the only way that works there's also lots of ways to meditate you can walk out in nature that's a meditation you can have quiet meditation or you can meditate with your eyes open that's used a lot in yoga and you can meditate for with music or like a guided meditation now i'm just saying that there are many ways to do this and just yeah. because you believe in your way doesn't mean that that aren't other ways that work better for other people because you can never know what works best for other people you only know what works for you so let me ask you this question then yes do you think that you could learn math by just thinking about numbers or I, I don't know. I've never tried it. Yeah. You, or do you need some instruction and to do some work? But I would what say I'm, learning what I'm, anything. You have to do something. You can't just mentally do what you've always been doing. You have to change what, what you've been doing. What I'm saying is that you can, yes, it's, it's good to do the assignment, the homework that you have in the boot camp. For some people, that, that pressure of having to do homework works. For me, what worked was that dialogue one-on-one -on -one with Joshua. I still had to, to do the mental work and I still had to get help in correcting, no, this is not what you're afraid of, you're afraid of this but it's, it's, it's a different approach that works for different people. And to say that there's only one approach is limiting. In my, is my, experience, opinion. my experience is I don't know any approach that works other than this, that there isn't any other approach to work. I yeah. believe that that's correct. In your experience, you don't know any other approach. Yeah. So yeah. show me, show me one approach. Show me one person who's been successful in the approach you're talking about. I don't know because I don't know what I everyone else is that. doing, Gary. I'm just saying. That. I'm saying to back up your words. You need I'm data. saying, Gary, be open that. So open many people that. will say that, oh yeah, no, I can just read books and I'll get, get there, you know. And here's Joshua telling us, and here is, and this has been said over and over again. And in the boot camp, it's like, if you're if you're not willing to do this work, that's your first limiting belief to get over. I believe that you believe that. And I don't believe that pen and paper is the tool that gets your mind working. And that's what I'm saying is that there are many people out there who are. So how does your mind work? That just don't, I how process, I process, I have a feeling. And then Where I think, why do I feel from? this way? Where are the thoughts coming from? I'm attracting them for, from right. my vibration, my feeling. And so I'm just saying, 
as a spiritual teacher, as it might be helpful to be open to the fact that there are other people living in this new approach, doing it differently. And there might be a different approach to do this work that you don't know about that will come to you at the next step. Yes, there might be, but for be. now, this is all we have. That's what you have. And I accept that you believe in what you but, do. I'm just saying there are other ways of doing it. Excellent. Tell me which ways. The, the work. I and just back told it up you, you process it in your head. It's work for me. But what I'm saying, Gary, is that you can't limit yourself by saying my way is the only way that works. I'm That's saying, I'm not saying my way. Exactly. What I'm saying is doing the work works, right? Your way. Not just thinking about it. Just thinking about it is why everyone, and I'm talking thousands of people, are. you can go to the Abraham Hicks um, Thoughts Become Things Facebook group, and you can see thousands of people who are still stuck in not getting law of attraction to work for them because they're I, not doing this work. I agree that you believe this. Yeah. So you think there's a whole bunch of success people who are just thinking positively and their lives are transformed overnight and no, they're going on to that's Vegas. That's not what I'm saying, Gary. I believe there are other ways of doing this except doing homework with pen and paper. That's well, what I'm saying. There are many ways of meditating and there are many ways of living this new approach and working on your limiting beliefs. Yeah. And I'm just saying you can, everyone can find a way that works for them. Okay. And for many people, I believe it's the Joshua way. Well, I absolutely believe that there are other ways. I just don't think anyone's found them yet. And if that's okay. There knows a better way. Let me know because I will start teaching that. I don't believe you'll be able to hear it. No, I'll be able to hear it. I'm totally open. I'm, I am absolutely focused primarily on positive change. Okay. I want to see, I want to dial it down. So, and I don't, I want it to be way more um, quicker, easier, faster, effective. I want to see everyone creating the life of their dreams overnight. Okay. I would love to find that thing. And if anyone knows about it, let me know. Cause I would absolutely <laughs> be into that. But for now, this is what we got. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to Laurel's. Answer. Oh, and I felt, answer, and I love it. I felt so much fear channeling this. And I was thinking for sure, that's just my inner bitch. It's not really channeling. Yeah. Okay. If, Oh God, I'm like, I want to apologize, but I'm not going to apologize. Okay. I don't apologize anymore. It is what it is. <laughs> yes, it is what it is. If you believe you know it all, why are you asking us? If you choose to see and live in the darkness, then by all means do so. That is an equally valuable and worthy exploration. And you can stay in this complaining for as long as you like or need to. That is your choice. You are completely in control of what you experience, just as you were in control in the past. You created all of it. You are the creator. If you choose to still see yourself as a victim, then that is your conscious choice. You know so much more now, and you still choose to see yourself as a victim, helpless and hopeless in a dark world. Well, that is by all means your choice, and you may do so for as long as you wish to live that. We cannot force you to change your perception. We cannot force you to stop feeling like a victim. If you want to live the feelings of a victim, then that is your right to do so. And you obviously are getting some enjoyment out of it. So if you wish to continue to explore that, then by all means do so. Like we said, you are in control of what you live and you are the creator of your reality. You always have been. That means that what you have experienced up until now has been your own creation. You chose it for yourself. You created it and you are continuing to choose and create what you live. To cry and blame the universe is pointless as you know that you are the universe. And what, uh, I, what I love in this and what is really important to understand is that um, we have attachments to our limitations yeah. because we get some satisfaction out of it. Yeah. When we cry and moan and other people come and comfort us, yes. we get that feeling of our parents doing the same thing. I do that all the time, playing the victim. Yeah, because you get some satisfaction out of it. Yes. Because and I other people can agree with you. Yes. But then I like, I pretend, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it because I want to. I just am the victim. 
Yeah, that's even yeah. worse, right? Because you have no control over it. Yeah. So. Um, you can complain that you don't like the rules, but my dear, you created the rules. You chose your player and you made the rules. You are the one dictating the game and you are the one playing it. If you are angry at the game, then you are fighting yourself. Feel free to do so. Just be aware that you are the one in control of what you experience and you always have been. You are the one who chose to play the game and you are the one who created the rules. You cannot blame any force outside of you. There is no force outside of you. You are the one. There literally is no one else to blame. That I hate that, that there's no, no one else to blame. I hate that. You can't blame anyone. Yeah. And you can't really even blame yourself. Yeah. But you because have to take no wrong. Yeah. You yeah. just have to take responsibility. Okay, I created this. Let's see what's in it for me. Let's yeah. figure this out. We'll, we'll go, you know, I'm looking at it from a limited perspective. Mm -hmm. I'll see it from a different perspective later. Let's even try and think of that higher perspective. Let's write it all out. Let's yeah. make sure we do our homework. Yes. Let's do the process. Let's <laughs> meditate. Let's focus on what we appreciate in writing. And then create something else if you don't want what you have lived so far. Well, that's sort of changing the conditions. So yeah. we got to remember that this is all a reflection of our vibration. Mm. So how am I being that caused this? Was I being a victim? And so I got, I got back a message that I'm being a victim. So how do I just stop being a victim? Well, mm -hmm. I understand that I am limitless and powerful. I'm, I've tapped into source energy. I'm source itself. I am the creator of this reality. It's my choice of perception. Let's start from that. Yeah. Let's not say anything's wrong. Let's not say anyone did anything wrong. Let's not say, I, let's not change, try and change. That's the worst thing. Hmm. Try and change yourself. Oh, if I was just better, people would like me, right? Hmm. If there was nothing, if I didn't have this one problem, people would like me. Don't try and change anything. Just reassess your perspective. And I find it interesting though, because I used to do this and I still do that. I, I'll say like, oh, I understand that, that I'm source, that I'm creator. But if you feel like a victim, you clearly don't understand. You know the theory, but you don't understand it. Yeah. And if you, and yeah. If, if this, recently, I just realized this. If you ever say, I wish, then you're acting like a victim, not the creator, right? Ooh. And I hope my dreams come true. You're acting like the victim, not the creator. The creator says, my dreams are coming true. This yeah. is part of the dreams that are coming true now. Look how spectacular this is now. I wonder what's in store for me next. Ooh -hoo. Yes, you are here to expand. Yes, you are love. If you know this, why do you keep refusing to take responsibility of how your life unfolds? If we may make a suggestion, we suggest it is because you do not understand. You say you know all of this, but if you knew, you would not persist in blame and stay in victimhood and hopelessness. You are choosing how to experience life, and if you understood and knew, you would not keep choosing this. So maybe you can op open up to learning and understanding more. Maybe you do not yet know at all. Maybe you can start by realizing that this is your responsibility and not something that an outside force can change for you if you just throw a fit of anger because your insistence and fighting is not serving you. You are the creator of you, of your life, and of all that is. You are. This means that you are 100, that you are 100 percent to blame for what you are living. This is your life and your responsibility. Knowing that you are 100 percent in charge, what do you intend to do about this? Well, I mean, this is the brilliant thing is that you attract a group of people who are living the old approach to life. And the first thing you tell them is you are a hundred percent to blame for the life you're living or a hundred percent to praise for the life you're living mm. or either way, it's yeah. all you. And everyone will say, well, if I was the creator of my reality, I would not create this. Yeah. And the opposite is true. You are the creator of reality and you did create this for a purpose, pretty much so you could find your way here now. Now that you understand this, what are you going to create from this point on? But it's a pretty hard message to get that you, oh shit, I did this. 
that's super pretty, hard message. But that's yes. Yeah. yeah. And most people reject it. Yeah. Most people reject that. Yet, what's the alternative? You're just a victim. Yeah. That's it. I mean, and you have to control everything, knowing yeah. that doesn't work. You know, that doesn't. That's a to me. That is more scary. That idea. Yeah. But once you start, like once you accept that shit, I did, I did this, I do this, I am the creator. There's no going back. You can't it, unknow it. Right. You can't yeah. unknow it, and but you can move forward. Yeah. But you, in moving forward, you have to align with love, which means you have to align with full acceptance of everything you've done in the past and who you are right now, hmm. not wanting any of it to change. Which is also hard. Yeah, I lost all my money in the crash of 2009 or so. And for years, I was going back going, geez, if I just had made this one decision, <laughs> if I just done that one thing, I would have been rich, would have yeah. made money and all that. Um, but then we wouldn't have Joshua. That's right. My friend yeah. at the time, um, I got two friends. One friend is naturally uh, in alignment and naturally in the new approach. And he just sailed through everything perfectly. He's, he's magnificently wealthy. He lives this great lifestyle. He's in perfect health, great mm. relationship, great work, great everything, right? Yeah. He, he took up uh, being a triathlete when he turned 50, never been in better shape, just loves life, has more friends than you can imagine. My other friend was like me, trying to control everything, trying to get other people to appreciate you, all that stuff. So. He didn't um, get hurt in the crash at all. And instead, he had just taken out an equity line of credit on his house right before the crash happened. So he had all this cash sitting there. And so he bought up all these houses at a quarter of what oh. they're worth. And he ended up becoming spectacularly wealthy from this. Yeah. At, had a drinking problem, got divorced, went into rehab twice, got two DUIs. His life's a complete mess. Oh. You know, and, and that's another obstacle he's going to come through. So I went through the, you know, loss of everything and starting Back then, over. yeah. He's going through that now, you know, yeah. the loss of everything and starting over just in a different way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. So, so, so now you can help him. Yeah. And if it doesn't get yeah. you one way, just wait, I'll get you another way, you know. <laughs> <You're ready for laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. If you're living true, in yeah. control and denial. Yeah. 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 So like we said, if you don't take that first inspiration, you'll get another one. They wow. don't give up. Yeah. Right. So are you done complaining? Has this complaining brought you anything of value? Do you wish to change? If you wish to change, then do so. We cannot change for you. You must be the change. You are the creator. Create. You are love. Love. If you continue to see yourself as a victim, that is what you will create. Because you are the creator. If you start seeing yourself as a powerful being of love, that is what you will create. A life lived by a powerful being of love because you are the creator. You decide what the player of the game lives. You decide what the game is. You do because you are the creator. You change the player of the game through changing your beliefs. You change the game through changing your beliefs. You change your feelings through changing your beliefs. You change your perspective through changing your beliefs. So what do you think would be the first thing to do if you want to stop being a player that is a victim? Change your beliefs. Change your beliefs. The change must come from within you, not from any outside force, because you are the creator. The change must be an active choice of perception, because you are the creator. What you perceive is what you live, because you are the creator. What do you wish to live? How do you wish to play? What kind of a player do you wish to be? You can be anything. You can live anything. You can feel anything you like because you are the creator. What you believe is what you live because you are the creator. And that is why you are here to create, to live your creation from a place of, place of both the player and the creator to live and to firsthand experience what a life as a player is, to live and experience firsthand what a life is from a player perspective 
and a player who knows she is the creator. To experience the power you hold as the creator when going from an experience of life as a victim to life as the ultimate and sole creator. To feel the power running through you when you rise up from the illusion of being the victim to the exhilaration of knowing you are the one creator. To experience the game from the creator perspective, playing the game as one of the players while simultaneously being the one and only creator. You cannot be both a victim and the one true power. You cannot be both a victim and a creator. So make your choice, then go live it because you are the creator. Yeah, make your choice and go live it. Yeah. And when we say victim, we think, okay, someone who's totally taken advantage of and mm. walked over, but yeah. it's, it's anyone who wants the conditions to change or be different than they are. Yeah. Anyone who wants themselves to be different than they are. And anyone who wants other people to be different than they are. And that's a hundred percent of us. And right? anyone who feels sorry for themselves. And most of us do that. hundred percent at some yeah. point, right? Yeah. So we're all sometimes being victims and we're all sometimes being the creators. And so an effective approach to life is to adjust those beliefs so that you're the creator more often. Well, we're always the creator. We just don't feel like it. Yeah. So that you're yeah. actually effectively creating what you truly want. Yeah. More of the time. Yeah. And sometimes you're going to feel like a victim. That's going to happen. But it's not a, you know, from the perspective of the non-physical, it's only in the moment. So in this yeah. moment, you and I are creating. Yeah. We're creating something that we're inspired to do. Mm. We know it's for our highest good. We hope it will be a benefit to others, but that's not the point of it. The point of it is the creation in this moment. And so we are effectively navigating our reality as creators. Yeah. Half an hour from now, I might get bit by my dog and then be the victim again, you know. And maybe you can get like a matching scar. Yeah, but, yeah. you know. I could get a little Hitler mustache. That would. I you could, could probably, get like a Hitler mustache tattooed. I could that bring that good. back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> one. Let's do that. You know, one hair. One, well, lucky wasn't. You know, one shape of a mustache is now gone forever. <laughs> like how long until the first person grows that back and it becomes a style? Maybe three, five hundred years from now, something like that. I uh, think a lot of guys have that in um, November. You What's have that November? November. You don't have that. Uh. -uh. It's. Uh, I think it's in November where it, they go, they do like um, cancer awareness for like testicle cancer or something yeah. or prostate cancer. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. And so they call it Movember, where where everyone has like a mustache. Not everyone. The male part of the population. population. Uh -huh. They have a mustache just for November to sort of advertise for this prostate cancer or whatever. Never heard of it. And then those people that can only get the Hitler mustache, they have to do that. That's all they can do. <laughs> so for one month a year, even Hitler mustaches are acceptable. My uh, friend has had his brother at the house and his brother had this full beard and mustache and he was shaving mm -hmm. it off. And my friend's was having a girl come to the house for a date. Yeah. And he and the brother was just in town, so she had never met him. And so he's like, just shave it like the Hitler man. <laughs> go to the door and see how long she goes. <laughs> yeah. If well, you start if you, if you start saving now, will you have have enough for um, November to get a mustache? No, it'll be scraggly and horrible. <laughs> you could possibly see it. But nobody I likes thought, it. I tried I thought, it for a while. I thought you were going to say you could possibly get one before me. And I was like, yeah, what maybe. the fuck? Don't say that on a podcast. Like, I could never do a beard, but I could do a, like, goatee thing. Oh, don't but do it's that. so Please small do and nobody likes it. No, no. I liked it for a while, but no one else did. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So this is why, you know, the, most of the people that come to Joshua come because they're stuck in the law of attraction. They found mm. Esther or some other teaching. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's more specifics that are out there. And yeah. there's way more. We're just like in the, we're just on the tip of the iceberg of all this information. We're getting what we can get now. Yeah. And as we, as we keep immersing ourselves in this, keep getting into it, 
more stuff is coming out, but it all comes back to the first sentence ever written by Joshua, which is everything is right. Yeah, so you true. Gotta get that first. Everything yeah. is right. Only from a limited perspective is anything wrong. All right, this has been the best podcast of today the of the month. For sure. <laughs> Yeah. If people would like to connect with you and Laurel, how would they do that? Laurelsmessage.com or Laurel's Message on Facebook. Excellent. And if you'd like to connect with Joshua, it's the uh, Friends of Joshua Facebook group or the teachings of Joshua.com. If you would like a free seven day course to raise your vibration through processing limiting beliefs, send me an email to Joshua Teachings at gmail.com. Or you can send your own question there, and maybe we'll pick it to be on one of these podcasts. And if you want to radically alter your life in the best way that I know how. <laughs> new Through book. writing? Yes. Yeah, we're having a new book. Well, it's not just writing. It's you have a coach. You've got weekly coaching calls. you got two Joshua Lives. you got a Facebook group. You're doing it with a group of people all over the world. There'll be about 50 or 60 people in this next group. And we have a meditation for each day. We have morning homework. We have assignments during the week. And then starting week two, we have evening homework. It's very intensive. It lasts eight weeks. And I think the results are phenomenal. So if you're interested in that, send me an email to joshuateachings at gmail.com. And I'll tell you more about it. Otherwise, until we see each other again, which may not be for a couple of weeks, because we're going to France and to Amsterdam. Woohoo! Oh, but we will send you our regards from there. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. You want to meet us in Amsterdam? No. Okay. See you later. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye.